I am about to log into Call of Dragons for the first time since the end of July. That's right. It's been over three months since I've logged into Call of Dragons. So today I'm going to go over eight reasons why I ultimately decided to sort of just slowly back away from Call of Dragons and quit the game, at least for now, because honestly, even though I haven't been playing the game for the past three months, I've been sort of keeping up with its development through community posts and also other YouTubers like Chiskel Gaming or Mr. Sneaky or Shinchi because I really feel like Call of Dragons has what it takes to be really great but there's just a couple of things that are really holding it back but first what's going on guys cheers I'm gonna be honest with you guys Coke Zero is way better than Pepsi Max anyway the other day on my live stream I kind of went down a rabbit hole over on Google Trends with everybody in chat and we were sort of comparing the different search volumes of different video games up against one another other and one of the things that was kind of sticking out was sort of the end result of call of dragons now if you guys have been following my channel for a while or if you at least followed my channel back when call of dragons came out it was a pretty big deal and you can see that right here in the red that call of dragons immediately on launch shot up to be about as popular as rise of kingdoms and afk arena by the way all these games including warpath are made by lilith games or farlight which is sort of like a to my knowledge a subdivision of Lilith so for the launch of the game there was a massive amount of hype and it's really not hard to see why because Hall of Dragons was essentially the spiritual successor to Rise of Kingdoms which has been arguably the most popular mobile city builder strategy game on the market since it came out in 2018. I guess that depends on if you include Clash of Clans but I think Clash of Clans is sort of like a different genre it's more of like a base defender anyway the point is the launch of Call of Dragons was absolutely massive and I was one of the people who kind of thought that maybe Call of Dragons could be the future of the mobile city builder strategy genre and that's why when the game first came out even though I wasn't sponsored to play it or make videos about it at all I still had a bunch of videos lined up for that launch because I expected it to be a big game and at launch it was but it quickly became apparent to me that that the game was losing steam relatively quickly and after a few months playing I eventually decided to just slowly back away from spending my time and money on the game now let me be very clear with you guys lately I've had a really good relationship with those over at Lilith games and also those over at Farlight because a lot of those individuals sort of co-mingle on at least the creator side of things and I did have the opportunity to be an associate creator for Call of Dragons and there was a period of time where I made a few videos and as an associate creator I got paid to make those videos and even though I had that ability to make money by creating Call of Dragons videos I still ultimately decided to just step away now that's not to say that I'll never come back to Call of Dragons again and I hope that I do because I actually had a lot of fun with the launch of Call of Dragons but I would love to see a lot of the things in this video addressed before I come back to the game in the future and let me just use this moment to point out that I don't just make content for money or for sponsorships or anything like that I'm okay with leaving money on the table if it's not a game that I am truly in love with and this video has no sponsorship either so if you guys would please at least drop a thumbs up on the video or consider becoming a member of the channel it'll make your name pop out amongst all the other comments and especially when I'm doing live streams I hope you can forgive the plug I literally never plug my memberships anyway let's jump right into Call of Dragons for the first time since July okay so we've got a new loading screen and I think that we are like in season two I think season two is like over now perhaps or something like that I think I think the game looks a little different and everything is highlighted when my cursor goes over it, which is very interesting. Okay. I can collect all of my resources still. I forgot that I even reached tier four, to be honest with you. Um, here we see a purchase reward purchase payback. I don't really know what this is. We have a monthly special offer. It looks like there's a frost dragon. Now last time I played was there was only a fire dragon. And also there were not, I don't even know who these guys 
are I think I did a video covering these two but yeah there's a lot that has changed so far maybe really not too much but let's go ahead and claim all of that stuff and wow I actually have a mail from somebody on the 29th of October which was just a couple weeks ago at this point hey I love your videos well you made it into one of them so I'm happy to see that and thank you for enjoying my videos if you have questions about artifacts I would highly recommend checking out Chiskel Gaming Mr Sneaky and Shinchi 42 they probably have the most up-to-date information about artifacts especially Mr Sneaky I know that he's been like grinding out videos like every single day or every other day so I'll try to link those three in the description below I'm sure you've seen their videos if you have been watching Call of Dragons content since it came out let's take a look at the events here conventional offerings I don't know what this stuff is but it looks free so I'll take it oh okay it looks like I'm still in chapter one here I don't really know what that is boss I need your help ever since the night the stars fell the animals have been getting all riled up and it's getting even worse so okay so this is war pets and I've heard about war pets but they were not in the game the last time that I played it I'm gonna go with snow peak rock because I know he's like an eagle but he kind of looks like an owl in this picture and owls are my favorite animal so this is as close as I'm gonna get so I'm gonna take the snow peak rock and this feels like kind of a almost like a Pokemon moment where you're getting your first uh your first Pokemon so okay cute we've got a pet bird We've got a burb everybody so yeah interesting now i released a pet and i got robust body and apparently now i can have my pet learn that skill and it looks like it replaces a already existing skill uh okay interesting i see and i can actually equip my war pet to one of my heroes but it looks like it's untamed so you have to reach level two affection level two to even use the war pet in battle okay got it while we're on the heroes tab let's go over the first red flag that i got for call of dragons and this was a red flag that i pointed out in the beta of call of dragons on september 16th of 2022 so this was over a year ago at the point of recording this video there was a beta that was launched i think it was a regional beta that was only available in select countries it was available i believe in like mexico and germany it was not available in the us and i effectively had to get a vpn in order to create a google play account in another country in order to live stream the beta for call of dragons but i wanted to get my hands on it as soon as possible and the immediately the first time that I played Call of Dragons the first red flag to me was the design of the characters okay and I've been saying this now for over a year but the design of these characters uh it's look these characters are not visually appealing to me and that's my opinion but let me just share with you guys this is my youtube channel demographics for the past year okay and my channel surprise surprise 95 percent of you guys are men okay males right and over 85 percent of you fall between the ages of 18 and 44 I would argue probably 18 and 40 right I think that's probably like the vast majority of you guys literally I mean the data is here it's 86 percent or something like that right it's it's an insane amount okay so that means that most of the rise of kingdoms players right are men between 18 and 44 that's the that's the data I mean that's just what my channel is all about okay only 3.7 percent are between 13 and 17. now let me just be honest here with you guys okay I think a lot of kids younger kids will use their parents accounts for YouTube or they might set up an account and they'll just check the box or they'll put the year of their birthday is much older that way they can bypass any you know kid content or whatever but these character designs to me feel like they are geared towards kids I mean people who are under the age of 18 that's my opinion I don't I mean I I can only speak from my experience but every time that I bring up the character design the most generous compliment that they get is that people are okay with it okay I've never I have never had anyone say that they loved the designs of the characters it's always either 
yes, I also don't like them, or I think they're okay. And you don't want the best compliment for your character designs to be they're okay. That's like a massive red flag. And this is something that I picked up on the first day that it was in beta over a year ago. And since then, some of these new characters are, um, I mean, I mean, Sindrion's okay. And Fragar's like kind of cool. Right. But I think a majority of these characters are, I mean, they're just okay. I guess. And another thing that I want to point out, right, is when you look at what are the most popular city builder games, I think on mobile rise of kingdoms is definitely one of them. Also Warpath is relatively popular, which is also made by Lilith, but you can even go back to games like Civ, right? Civ five, Civ six, or even older than that. The art style of those games is not this, right? So like, if you just look at the most popular games in the in the genre like i think that would give you a pretty good idea as to like what you the target demographic would like and i think it was just a i think it was a big miss i that's i, I that's just how i feel okay i feel like i'm beating a dead horse here let's move on to the second thing that i realized about call of dragons when i first started playing the second pretty big red flag that i noticed for call of dragons was two things one was that they limited the number of gems that you could gather on the map and two you can't send mana to other players now they may have changed these things but i suspect that they haven't and these two things for me were massive red flags now here's the thing in rise of kingdoms did i gather gems no in rise of kingdoms did i send a lot of gold to other players which is that game's equivalent to mana the answer is no i think there's been some times where i've received gold during kbk and things like that but these two limitations effectively make it really hard for free-to-play players to grind in a way that would make meaningful progress in the game now here's the thing if you look at rise of kingdoms right i am going to use a 12 inch pvp as an example for one of the best uh, accounts that you can kind of build in rise of kingdoms as a free-to-play player now does he have the best free-to-play account no he quit the game for a while and so like time passes and you kind of lose out on that but he's pretty much done everything right and he's been doing things right since like the day he came back to the game and he grinds the game pretty much every day right like you can't really grind rise of kingdoms a lot more than 12 inch pvp PVP does and even still his account like is a competitive absolutely I think he's done amazing things as a free-to-play player but it's costed him a significant amount of time to do that and when you compare him to Wales he doesn't stack up I mean like look I hope that you know he doesn't take this the wrong way but I mean you put 12 inch PVP on the battlefield with Mimi and it's like there's not it's not even close like in the blink of an eye it's over and it would take him weeks to recover from from a Mimi swarm right like it, it is what it is right so if we take 12 inch as the most extreme example of the benefits that you can get from chaining barbarians from gathering gems on the map and from sending gold from farms to your main you still end up with an account that is first of all quite good and he's proven that it's very competitive but it's still gonna lag behind the 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 whales and the big spenders and so when we look at call of dragons which removes the chaining and it removes effectively the gem grinding and gem farming and it removes the ability to have tons of farm accounts and make meaningful progression it feels like out of the box the developers wanted to sort of suffocate the free-to-play players now look is gathering gems fun no do i recommend players do it not really do i recommend players have nine farm accounts in rise of kingdoms i mean if you want but it's not that fun of an experience but you can still do it if you want to and call of dragons out of the box made their intentions clear right even though all these things are not fun and even though these things aren't things that i do 
the intention was clear they seemingly wanted to make it harder to be a free to play player and to me that's just a red flag it's just a red flag if people want to grind the game for 24 hours let them grind the game for 24 hours as long as it doesn't ruin the experience for everyone else which i mean look at 12 inch pvp's account do you think his account is so powerful that it's ruining the game for everyone else no it's not okay so i don't really see a reason why these free to play grinding methods had to be suffocated from day one but it's a red flag for me the third red flag that I had with Call of Dragons was that I noticed they sort of had an emphasis on hero specific tokens and also season specific tokens and if you guys don't know tokens are effectively the legendary commander sculpture in rise of kingdoms okay in this game they're called tokens and it felt like to me and I mean I say feel like but I mean you could just see for yourself when you play the game that a lot of the rewards in the game came in the form of uh season one here it's g1 I don't know why they call it g but season one and season two tokens okay now I have a lot of universals here and that's because I bought a lot of the bundles and I haven't used any of them right I noticed that a lot of the rewards came in the form of season specific tokens or in hero specific tokens and the problem for me with this strategy or with this reward structure is it makes it harder for players to sort of future proof their account by saving up truly universal tokens for whatever's coming later and that's one of the beautiful things about rise of kingdoms is that there isn't really a season legendary commander sculpture like there are the commander re-released chests that you get in the lucerne scrolls and that's only a relatively recent thing but all of the big events give universal legendary commander sculptures right and that means that even a free-to-play player has a source of legendary commander sculptures that they can use on a future commander that is going to be perhaps meta breaking or game changing or is a must have and the reason that that's so important is because again like you have to reward the free to play players with a uh, meaningful progression if they're doing the right things right like if they are doing what you're supposed to be doing as a quote unquote good player they should be able to compete with other good players even if those players are spending a little bit of money in the game okay so if you kind of lock people into only getting season one heroes and then only getting season two heroes and then later it's only season three heroes and you don't have as many ways to get truly universal legendary tokens then well what happens in season nine when the season two heroes are irrelevant well you don't have any universal legendary tokens saved up for then and now your whole account is outdated because everything that you have is from season two season three or whatever so and look i i could again i could be wrong about this i haven't played the game in three months perhaps there are tons of ways to get legendary hero tokens these days but um from what i saw it felt kind of limiting and that is just another suffocation on the progress of your account the fourth red flag for me was the skill upgrade system now in rise of kingdoms when you add a skill to a commander it goes on one of the skills that you have unlocked and that is a randomized system that basically everybody agrees kind of sucks for the player experience right like if you don't know what you're doing then you could potentially end up getting a bunch of skill points in a skill that's not as good as the active skill for example now there are ways to undo your progress on that commander so you can have a chance again at sort of re-roll but that system sucks I'm just gonna say it. the system sucks okay and in Grand Cross Age of Titans which is another city builder game just like Call of Dragons they just let you pick the skills that you want to level up and like imagine if you played World of Warcraft and you just didn't get to choose what skills got stronger over time like you're playing as a fire mage and you want to make sure that like your best damage dealing abilities are getting stronger and then the next time you level up oh well great news we reduce the cooldown of blink like cool bro that's not what I wanted as a player right and so if your progression is kind of out of your control then that feels bad okay and Grand Cross Age of Titans came out this year just like Call of Dragons and they just said hey you get to pick your skills and everyone was like oh my god that's amazing Call of Dragons came out this year and despite 
despite them knowing players don't like the randomized system from rise of kingdoms they still decided to implement it here in call of dragons and they actually made it worse because in rise of kingdoms there is a skill lock feature which came later in the development of the game and there's no reason why call of dragons shouldn't at least have launched with the skill lock feature it should have at the very least launched with skill lock and yet it didn't but the real red flag to me was that they just kept the bad system from the old game and let me play a little bit of devil's advocate here okay because i understand from the developer's point of view that if players can just instantly get everything that they want with no restraints or no limits then eventually they, they just quit right because there's nothing to chase they can effectively if they have enough money they could just buy everything immediately and then they're bored right so i understand that some things in the game have to be really hard to get that way there's still even whales are still chasing something right and, and i guess that but the the solution to that is to make players chase a currency or an upgrade system that eventually gets them what they want rather than having them chase a roulette wheel where they just keep spinning and they have barely any control over their progression right you can still use rng it's just the way that it's implemented here is it it there's nothing that adds to the player experience it just makes it frustrating and the fact that they sort of improved it in rise of kingdoms with the skill lock feature and then still didn't implement that here big red flag for me big red flag and definitely a miss okay those first four things are all red flags and i think that a lot of players i would say a majority of players would agree with those four things i think like just out of the gate those are all just sort of just unappealing things about the game the next four things are going to be my opinion okay these are strictly my own opinion you can agree or disagree in the comment section below and in fact i would really like to know what you think about these things okay the first thing is that rise of kingdoms is actually more casual friendly than call of dragon think about how you wage war in rise of kingdoms you send out an army and you face smash it into a pve content a player or whatever that's it you're done okay 99 percent of the combat in rise of kingdoms is melee combat and that's it extremely simple combat in call of dragons you have flying units you have ranged combat not only that but you have medium ranged combat with the archers and you have long range combat with the mages and you also have artifacts which you have to manually cast on sometimes in a direction like a lot of the artifacts are skill shots like as if this were league of legends or something like that which it's not and for me as a player in this genre i think that the combat in call of dragons is amazing like they took what worked in rise of kingdoms and they made it better and that's great but my literal job is to play games like this and so that's fine for me but when you're talking about some you know again to use my demographics as an example a 36 year old guy is just sitting on the bus on his way to work he sees an ad for call of dragons he downloads it what is the probability that he's going to find the combat system in call of dragons more complicated than rise of kingdoms a hundred percent and so as the complication of the combat system goes up the amount of players willing to learn it understand it and enjoy it goes down that's just how it works okay so whether you like the combat or not is kind of irrelevant what matters most is which combat system is most enjoyed by the most number of people and i again with rise of kingdoms th i think one of the reasons the game is so popular is because it's dumb simple it's stupid simple you just smash into the target the skills fire off automatically the interactions between infantry cavalry and archers are calculated automatically okay all your buffs and debuffs are controlled by you before you even enter the battle so you just go in you face smash and you win or lose and there's a beauty in the simplicity there that is missing from call of dragons now my solution to this is first of all remove all the skill shots and i know i already know that a lot of call of dragon players are gonna be pissed off about that i get it okay i get it and it's cool to hit skill shots and i understand that like it gives you more you feel like you're more in the in the battle i totally i get it okay i get it but i mean for the majority of players 
it would just be better if your skill shot just automatically fired at the target you're hitting I mean most of the time you're probably doing that anyway like let's be honest like you're probably gonna fire it in front of you anyway right now that's not always the case but a majority of the time it is and just the fact that you could remove that from even being a thought in players mind you remove that boundary you dumb the game down a little bit I know that's what we're talking about we're talking about dumbing the game down I think what you'll find is that more players will actually enjoy or engage in the combat in Call of Dragons even though you would effectively be taking away features and again I understand how un unpopular the statement is I, I totally get it but something is not working right so like I mean we, we could start there right we can start by making the game more accessible to more people especially if the art style is going to cater to kids like if you have nine-year-olds playing this game you, you should definitely make this a dumb simple war strategy game okay the next thing I want to talk about and this is again my opinion is that I didn't really feel attached to the community of Call of Dragons and this is actually something that I know Chiskel Gaming has talked about a bunch on his channel or in his sort of videos where he goes over the future of Call of Dragons and you know how he feels about it or whatever and I think he's I think he's he's kind of he's hit the the nail on the head there I think that you know when I first joined Call of Dragons and let me just be clear like I came in as a content creator so I've I had a little bit of a different experience than than a lot of people right it felt like Call of Dragons was filled with just the grindiest sweatiest rise of kingdoms players out of the gate and of, of course like of course it would be right like that's going to be the core audience at least for the game's launch and it felt like the most important part about the game was grinding rather than just like having fun and like again maybe we're maybe omniarch's just being casual for this video like maybe i can maybe i'm just a maybe i'm just a casual andy maybe i'm a casual game enjoyer okay but the cool part about rise of kingdoms is that you can kind of play it casually most of the time and then when kvk comes around you go hard okay that's the cool part um but in call of dragons like from launch it felt very grindy and I just didn't really feel like there was much of a community there it felt like everyone was just trying to I mean like look it's it's a war game right so of course everyone is just going to try to dominate the server as soon as things happen and, and I totally get that but the community kind of felt temporary to me like we knew that season resets were gonna happen eventually right and so I don't know I just don't feel like uh, I really connected with players in this game like I did in rise of kingdoms when I first started playing rise of kingdoms and there's something about community that is really a vibe check and that's one of the things that makes it really difficult to talk about at least for me in in this video from like my experience maybe it was like my starting server maybe I just got like a bad starting server or or whatever the case might be I don't know but I think that you know because Chiskel has talked about this so much I I feel like I'm not alone in this but the vibe check was just missing it just missed the vibe check for me it just didn't feel like a very community oriented game and that's a big component of rise of kingdoms okay this is also one of my opinions um it's too time consuming to keep up with multiple city builder games that's just that's just the fact it's just a fact these games uh that can be very grindy like we just talked about right and that's okay I, I I can appreciate a grindy game but they really do compete for each other's time and so when you build a predecessor to a successful city builder you really are kind of fighting up hill with getting that audience to convert over right like if you were playing rise of kingdoms and then call of dragons comes out there is first of all an opportunity cost and a sunk cost right because you already have so much progress in rise of kingdoms that switching to a new game where you're starting over like you feel like you're losing a lot you feel like for some of us we're losing years of progress so that is already going to be hard to convert those players but then on top of that let's say you want to play both games well now you have double the amount of events to cover double the amount of kvks double the amount of drama double the amount of alliance negotiation and 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 participation like it's a lot of time it really is if you want to be active and 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 a, and a good player in multiple city builder games and this is not just something that's wrong with call of dragons by the way this is the same thing with you know i don't obviously you can tell i don't play grand cross of titans on this channel right now and that's another reason why like playing multiple city builder games is is it's very time consuming and i just don't really want to do that okay uh and so like i don't and here we are and that's i think that's just the reality for a lot of players is if they played rise of kingdoms or they're playing warpath or they're 
playing whatever like they might have tried out call of dragons and it just wasn't enough to overcome that 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 feeling of loss from switching games and there was too much to do both and so you're gonna drop the game that you have less progress in that's just how it's gonna go and the final thing that i want to go over here and again this is my opinion uh and this was the nail in the coffin for me and that is season resets i i, I we we knew going into the game that season resets were a thing but once it came around, uh, it kind of just took all the wind out of my sails. I, it, like, it's one thing to have a game that's really grindy, and it's another thing to make me grind the same stuff again. Like, whoo, that feels really bad. That feels really bad. Like, the fact that my, like, all, like, look at the levels of my heroes. Like, I leveled all of them up, and, like, I have to level them up again. Like, oh nope nope no i'm not i'm not i'm not gonna do it i'm just not gonna do it and that's the thing where it's like you know it feels kind of worse than crystal tech and rise of kingdoms because it resets everything and also your policies reset as well and it's like oh my god bro like i'm gonna use world of warcraft as another example okay imagine you hit level 60 and then you just go back to level one and you just lose all your skills and there's no benefit like there's nothing that you don't get anything right like the benefit is that you get to do it again and it's like mm, nah i'm actually good i'm actually good i like a game where i can reach end game and i'm at end game and i know i'm at end game and i can be ready for the next content so for example in rise of kingdoms we have pve content like soroli crisis or something like that right and i know that if they add a new difficulty or they add a new boss or they add a new thing or if they add you know war of the ruins or champions of olympia like they add these new game modes and these new events i know that as an end game player i can jump into those events and i'm prepared for those events on day one in call of dragons like they can add new events but i'm still busy catching up just doing the stuff that i've already done and that just for me does not feel good now i know some people like seasonal games they like seasonal games and that's fine i'm not one of them and i just like i said i'm cool with doing the grind once i get that you need to there like there has to be something to there has to be something to do in the game like i get that but doing the same stuff again like when they reset the dragon trail i was like there's no way i'm doing that again bro there's not a shot i knew the moment i saw this reset i was quitting the game because there's just no dude no okay you want me to grind it again so that way it can get reset again no shot i'm doing this every season there's just no way and as i reflect on some of these bullet points that i've gone over in the video like limiting the gem gathering and being unable to send mana not being able to control your skill ups having all of your progress reset every season and like i didn't even touch on the fact that the skills for the war pets are leveled up randomly right and that's like a whole other thing but all these things you know when i think about them i ask myself are they fun are these things that we're doing in the game are they fun fun do they make the experience better am i having a good time like this is a video game right and so when you start playing a game and you find out you can't control your skill ups and you can't gather 2000 gems a day and you can't like there's a lot of these restrictions and and the game you have to play a game in the way that the devs won and then they're going to reset all your progress it's like at, at a certain point you have to step back and say am i having fun in this video game and it doesn't really matter about anything else right like if the if there's not a community there and i'm not having fun then i'm just gonna quit right and 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 that's the other thing too is that i think a lot of games are kind of built in a formulaic way like they're built from the ground up with okay how do we get players retained how do we get the player retention numbers how often are players opening the app every day how long are they playing every time that they open the app right these are metrics that game designers look at in 2023 to see you know is their game successful and those are all good data points but like at the tippy top is like is it fun is it fun like it's a video game is this fun are we having fun and if you're not having fun then everything else just falls away there's no game if it's not fun and so it doesn't matter if oh well we have to do season resets for player engagement it's like nope actually i'm just gonna quit how about that now the player engagement goes to zero right and so that's to me my perspective on a lot of these things is is it fun and that's a binary answer for me and if it's not if i say this isn't fun too many times in a row i'm out 
I'm peacing out. I'm I'm Gucci. I'm not I'm not I'll come back later if any of this stuff gets fixed. And that's kind of where I'm at with Call of Dragons. And I wanted to make this video to just kind of address this because I've had a lot of people in like live streams and I've had a lot of people in comments and and Discord and everything kind of say, like, hey, like, you know, why aren't you talking about Call of Dragons? Why aren't you playing it? Are you gonna keep playing it? Are you gonna come back to it? whatever? I will come back to Call of Dragons, right? I will come back eventually if they can fix a lot of the issues that we talked about in this video now like look character design are they gonna fix that i doubt it but like the other things you know bring put like fun at the top of the list for every like any time the devs are considering should we do this change question one is it fun yes or no if the answer is no throw it in the garbage and start over because like you gotta start with fun and if it's not fun that's it uh, uh you know people aren't gonna play so i hope i come back to call of dragons i think the game from a graphical perspective is amazing i think the bones and the foundation of the game are amazing i think the lore and the world is amazing and the way that they tell stories is really really great i love the behemoth system and i think the war pet system could be interesting and cool and even the artifact system has something there to it right so there's a lot to love about call of dragons and i really want the game to be good like i, I mean as a content creator like I do this as a job and like so I'm really invested in, in these games like performing well and like having a lot of players and being popular and and I want the game to do well right so I, I don't want this video to come off as like just bashing the game for no reason like I love the genre and I think Lilith and Farlight have done amazing things and they have really talented people working there and they they can make a good game but right now in the current state that it exists I don't think Call of Dragons is a great game unless you you love seasonal games if you love seasonal games download call of dragons it's gonna be a lot of fun for you but i guess i'm just not the person in for that demographic but i have to ask myself like i'm smack dab in the middle of my metrics okay i'm right in here okay i'm in the majority group and you know if i'm not having fun then i suspect a lot of other people in this in in your niche also aren't having fun and that's a huge problem and this is the outcome right is is the new game being uh five times less searched than the old game and and that's kind of just the data even on youtube search it's pretty much the same so with that being said if you made it to the end of this video drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton and it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other call of dragons players might see it and maybe at some point in the future i can come back to call of dragons and explore all the changes and be like oh my god they made the game better but that's only going to happen if a lot of people speak their mind and give feedback on the game and i just want to be clear like i don't want this video to come off as just me being negative i've just had a lot of people asking me why i'm not playing the game and like here it is this is my feedback for call of dragons in its current state and that is that and hopefully something changes in the future because i want to come back and i want to know what you think comment down below did you play call of dragons and quit are you still playing call of dragons did you never try call of dragons i would love to hear from you guys down there and if you're enjoying call of dragons if you think call of dragons is in the best place it's ever been in i also want to know down below i really do please let me know in the comments and while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time that i upload a call of dragons video and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace